I've had the Pau Kiri RGB 10 Max 3 for more than a month now. I've made an impressions video and now here is my full review. So this is an RRK 3566 device which I've already had some of. The Pau Kiri X55, the Pau Kiri RGB 30, and the Anvernic RG353V. So this will be relatively short. For the device itself, I only bought this because this is yellow and the D-pad is in the correct place for retro games. So looking around the device, at the front you have your 16x9 screen. Pauki D does not provide a screen protector, which is kind of sad. D-pad, analog sticks, and face buttons. As with most Paokiri, the mushy D-pad that triggers accidental diagonals is very much in place. At the top, you have your shoulder buttons which are thankfully stacked. The R1 and the L1 clacks are very loud. So you also have your volume buttons here, mini HDMI, power, and reset button. Nothing at the back except for these grips, and nothing on the sides. At the bottom, you have your two speakers, two USB-C, two micro SD, and a 3.5mm jack. The build is okay, a bit better than the X55 and the RGB30. But this does not feel as solid as the Anvernic RG35XXH. Shaking this device will produce some rattle. I do appreciate how Pau Kitty creates yellow devices. Ergonomically, this is very good as it has bumps on the backs that help with the grip. Similar to the X55, the 10 Max 3 shines on the following, the screen, the battery, the software, and the performance. The smaller screen actually makes the visual sharper over the X55. However, the black bars for retro systems, which are almost all of them, are very prevalent. Use widescreen hacks if they are available. Speaking of games, depending on the configuration you will buy, the cheapest one is about 4,000 pesos with no games. That is quite a lot for a system with no games. More so if it does not have a great build and no games, that is additional work. Keep that in mind. The battery is great. 6 hours for Game Boy Advance and below. PS1 gets about 5 and PSP and Dreamcast gets about 4. The charge time is relatively good as well as it can fast charge. Please note that Type-C to Type-C charging will not work. Get a fast charger that uses Type-A to Type-C. For the performance, the RG3566 chip has been around for quite some time. PS1 and below will perform great, with compatibility for some games for the Dreamcast and PSP. Check out my RG3566 PSP performance test on my channel. The software has always been Paukiti's bread and butter. Well, actually all credit should go to JellOS and or the Rocknix team. The software is very easy to navigate and great to look at. It also has Wi-Fi which enables Samba, image scraping, and retro achievements. Do take note that Wi-Fi for some reason only work with a 2.5GHz band. And while each system is already pre-configured, you can always easily change them through the game settings, either per game, per console, or the whole system. Wrapping this up, here are my quick pros and cons. For the pros, you have a great 720p screen, good ergonomics, a battery that lasts long and charges fast, software which is very easy to use, a relatively good performance, and the Wi-Fi. For the cons, you have your build quality, random freezes and crashes, Bluetooth connectivity is still terrible, and the price. The cheapest variant has no game, so making this not a buy and play system. At about $70, the Paukili RGB 10 Max 3, with its average build and lack of games, is really a hard sell. Generally, PAUKIDI has been trailing especially here in the Philippines. There doesn't seem to be an official PAUKIDI store in Shopee, and the prices of their consoles are still relatively high. With the literal plethora of choices, it's hard to recommend this one over other cheaper options, especially if those cheaper options will be ready to play the moment you receive them. For example, the Miu Mini Plus comes in at about 2,900 pesos or $50 with the games. While it pales in comparison performance and software-wise, installing Onion OS drastically elevates the experience, at least on the software side. 
the build is also so much better. Another example, the ever-present Anbernic seem to have settled on selling their Anbernic RD35XXH for about 3,000 pesos or $52, and this one already has games. If you are dipping your toes in the retro handheld market, there are a lot of options available to you. 1,000 pesos is a relatively big amount, especially here in the Philippines. If strictly looking at bang for your buck, the Paukidi RGB 10 Max 3 is not the best buy. However, for those like me that value looks, a great UI experience, ergonomics, and don't mind putting a little elbow grease, the Paukidi RGB 10 Max 3 is a great option. Thank you so much for watching guys. Consider like, sharing, and subscribing if this has been useful. This has been Norman3000, see you soon, and happy gaming!